It has come to my attention recently that Vardarskans are not the only deceived people that try to appropriate Greek history. I was surprised to read comment after comment of Afrocentrists who actually believe that the ancient Greeks were black while also claiming their achievements. It stopped being funny after a while though and I got curious to read their sources. And that's where it started being fun again. I think it's important to take some time debunking these theories not only because laughter is beneficial for health but also because they are not true. It shouldn't take long, anyway. These theories are largely based on a paper published by Arnaiz Vilena, a Spanish immunologist who claimed that Greeks are found to have a substantial relatedness to sub-Saharan people which separates them from other Mediterranean groups. This paper is so scientifically wrong that three of the most eminent geneticists decided to write a small article in Nature to disprove it. They wrote the following. They used a single genetic marker for their analysis to construct a genealogical tree and and map of 28 populations from Europe, the Middle East, Africa and Japan. Using results from the analysis of a single marker, particularly one likely to have undergone selection for the purpose of reconstructing genealogies is unreliable and unacceptable practice in population genetics. It is surprising that the authors were not puzzled by these anomalous results which contradict history, geography, anthropology and all prior population genetic studies of these groups. We believe that the paper should have been refused for publication on the simple grounds that it lacked scientific merit. So basically, they only used one gene sequence that is also subject to natural selection, which means it can evolve randomly in different populations. This explains all the other weird results, like the Japanese that result nearly identical to West and South Africans. Even a university genetics textbook includes this paper as an example to teach students how not to do experiments of this type. But it doesn't end there. Arnaiz Vilena, the author of this notorious paper also thinks he is a linguist, apparently the greatest of all times, since he believes he has deciphered Egyptian, Hittite, Sumerian, Harian, Ugaritic, Akkadian, Babylonian, Elamite and Phoenician, plus of course Etruscan, Iberian, Tartasian, Guanche and Minoan, which have never been fully deciphered by anyone else. He also claims he is the one who should be credited as the real translator of the Rosetta Stone and the Hammurabi Code. Of course, his theory has not been accepted but instead heavily criticized as it lacks the slightest value and is contrary not just to the scientific method but to common sense. Lastly, I think it's worth mentioning that Arnais Vilena has been accused of the following crimes leading to a suspension from work without pay. You choose whether to trust him or not. As ridiculous as it may sound, Afrocentrists also use the pottery art technique of the Greeks as proof for their absurd theories. I mean, Greeks were black just like the Indians were blue and the Chinese were red. Jokes aside, there were some conventions in Greek pottery art depending on where and when it was made, such as white for female flesh, black for male. Do you know how Greeks represented actual black people? quite different from this. And the reason is that their appearance was so strange to them that they would exaggerate their facial features. I am sure that Afrocentrists won't change their minds even after watching this video, but there's one question I have for them. Where have all these supposed blacks gone? Because today they are not in Europe and the same goes for the rest of the world since Afrocentrists also claim they created all civilizations from the Mexican to the Chinese one.